All right, so it's time to continue our little quest to find a K11 load. Just to jog our memory, all right, last time we were testing overall lengths, right? We tested overall length all the way from 2.9 to 3.1 inches. 3.050 was our best shooter. Shot pretty decent. So today what I want to do, I want to go ahead and take that 3.050 number and let's try some different powder charges and see uh, see what sort of uh, group changes we get. We're going to stick with IMR 4895. Previously we did 40 grains, which was a, a, a nice light load. We're going to work up from there. So we'll go half grain increment. So let's go 40.5, 41, 41.5, 42, and 42.5. And we'll just go see how they shoot. I'm going to use the exact same 25 pieces of brass. I've just wiped them off with some alcohol. I'm not going to tumble them or anything like that. We're just going to yeah, pop out primers, resize these guys, and get some new powder in them. New powder and bullet. And see where that takes us. I picked up some ammo. I've never seen 7.5 by 55 Swiss on the shelf in the uh, you know in the in the gun shops I frequent. But finally, one of them apparently has started carrying some. These are 174 grain, which matches like the Swiss GP11 ammo, right? What I haven't done, well, I'll tell you what, once we get some, uh, once we get a round loaded, we'll have a look. I wonder if this crap will chamber. I assume it will. It, it, it probably definitely will in the K11. And I have to assume it'll work in the K31. That's a safe direction, by, by the way. Yeah, no problem there, of course. So, and, yeah, and it's uh, well short of magazine length. So it looks like this stuff's probably short, you know, K11 sort of size, but once we get some of our big long, or K31 size, once we get some of our big long K11 ammo loaded up, we'll compare it and see just how much longer we're going than this guy. I guess I could uh, just measure it real quick. Yeah, 2.9. So that was the, that was, that's the same as the shortest ammo we loaded before. But what I want to do you know, while we're at the range testing out these 25, I'm going to shoot uh, shoot a group with these guys and see how they compare. And I guess I lied when I said I hadn't seen any of this on the shelf. There is one shop that carries some that's like $40 a box. It's like, you know what, I'm not paying $40 a box just to, uh, just to test something. But this stuff was pretty cheap. I think it was like 16 or 17 bucks. So I can live with that. I'll uh, I'll lay out that much money for uh, for a quick test, and plus it gives me some more brass. So yeah, that's it. Let's get some dies slinging. Oh yeah, another thing. There was a discussion on Reddit that kind of made me wonder whether I should try a different bullet. This is the 175 grain Sierra Match King. So the Swiss GP11 ammo is 174, and they're saying this gets you pretty close. You know, it'd be nice if whatever ammo, whatever load I end up with for these guns, hopefully it would uh, track reasonably close to the uh, to the Swiss GP11, because I'm assuming that's how the sights are on these guns, right? The increments are in 100 meters. So it'd be nice to uh, have ammo that followed that at least a little bit, you know, or, or somewhat closely. So that's coming. After we get this load worked up, we'll see uh, how these shoot. Maybe we'll, you know, we might stick with this bullet for another video or two just to get a load worked up. But once we get this worked up, I'll probably switch over to this. And I'll tell you what, I'll probably switch. We'll go to the K31, and then we'll start loading these. And, uh, yeah, so that's what's coming. Plenty of Swiss rifle stuff. So, yep, let me get get situated here. 
just going to give these guys a, a light coat of Imperial Sizing Wax. Yep, no problem there. Alright, sizing's done. I'm just wiping these guys off. And I'm in a little bit of a hurry. I'm not going to uh, do any anything special here. I'm not even going to, like, the primer pockets are a little funky, but they're fine. This has only been fired once since the last time it was tumbled, right? So, it's fine and shouldn't need, like, trimming or anything like that. I'll measure a couple here real quick. We'll see how much they, 2.185. 2 .181, 2 .181, 2 .181, 2.181, 2.181, 2.179. So what was our trim length? You guys remember? All right, let me. Yeah, trim length 2.179. So these are getting to where they're just a couple thousandths over trim length. And that's good. One more firing and they'll be ready for a nice healthy trim. But for now, we're going to leave them just like they are. So I just need to throw some primers in these guys. And, and even the, uh, like even the case mouths look good. It's like, you know, the last, the chamfer from last time is still kind of in place. They're just they're they're good to go. So we're just going to sling primer straight in them and and get to town. See if I can get 25 out of here without dumping them everywhere. You know, I think I'm using CCIs this time. I think last time I used Winchesters. It shouldn't matter. I usually don't get too worked up over primers. Whatever's laying out on the bench is fine. All right, that's primers. You know, I meant to mention, somebody had commented, it's actually on a different video, about how they were having problems with their uh, K31 and uh, the case mouth getting dinged really bad after shooting it. I've seen the same thing. I don't remember for sure if my K K11 did it, but I know my K31 did. But it only did it when I was really going to town with the slide, you know, with the with the bolt. When you really freaking uh, hammer that thing, the brass gets a rough ride on the way out. And freaking brass, this is my K31 and, and the K11 sling brass all over the place. So most of these videos where we're working up loads and we're shooting from the bench, you'll see me like, eh, slowly, you know, work the bolt instead of freaking going to town all operator style and that's why those things just kinda kinda sling it everywhere so there's that I need a scale I need a trickler and we'll be ready for our first load and what was our first load our first load was 40.5 grains I don't remember which scoop to dupe I was using here And this is a 2.8 cc. Let's see what that gets us. Yeah, that's 37 grains, so that's a good start. Get the trickler primed here. There we go.
So I've been looking into taller front sights, and they're definitely out there. But it seems that the, the guy who was selling them on the uh, Swiss Rifles forum has passed away this year. And there was another guy that people had mentioned were selling them. But when I emailed him, he emailed me back, I don't know, saying he was waiting on something or... Yeah, they, they weren't available. So, that quest is going to continue because I want taller front sights on both, uh, both the K11 and the K31. I want to be able to I want to be able to shoot what I'm aiming at. This shooting way high stuff uh, gets really old. All right, there's our 40.5 charges. I'll tell you what I forgot to do was check my scale. I always like to do that. You never know if I can find my tweezers. There they are, right in front of me. 20 grains, 40 grains, and 0.5 grains. 40.52. I can live with that. Good deal. All right, let's see. Uh, you can't even see the uh, bullet seating die, can you? All right, got our seating stem backed out. This time we're going with 3.050, right? It's just kind of eh, look down into each one as I pick it up. Make sure there's powder in there. Come on, that bullet doesn't want to sit straight. Okay, that should be way long. 3.16 something or other, so that's like uh, very long. Three point one two three, still way long. Oh, three point zero six one. So I'm only eleven thousandths long now. Three point zero five seven. Didn't quite go enough. three point zero five four so that's close enough to where we'll go ahead and seat the next couple bullets yeah three point zero five six so these are still reading a bit long Three point zero five one. Run this one back through. Three point zero four nine. So perfect. We're straddling the the target. Three point zero five two. Good deal. So and also I want to hit them in the. Uh, the Leaf Factory crimp die, which I've got set with a with a light little crimp, nothing crazy, and that is ready to shoot. Or ready to drop.
check this last one just to be thorough 3.050 right on the money all right time to move on to the next five 30 or uh, let's see 41 grains all right down to the last round here one thing I didn't do or at least I don't think I did was uh, grab one of those PPU rounds and compare our overall length here yep we're still 30.51 so good to go, nothing's changed. Let me grab one of those and we'll have a look. Really interested to see how these will shoot. I'll probably shoot 10 in the K11 and then I'll save 10 and uh, shoot them later in the in the K31. So yeah, you can see pretty significant difference there. I'll tell you what, let me grab my bullet comparator which eh, I've got my I don't have the 30 caliber insert in it I could switch it out you guys got a minute yeah you're good if I can find the damn Allen wrench go so our comparator number with our stuff here for 3.432 and with their stuff 3.291 make sure I'm lined up here yep 3.291 Wow, that's incredible. 3.43, like, is the ogive of these things really that different? I guess so, right? You look where, uh, yeah, not only is the uh, overall length just drastically different, you look at you know this is yeah damn near all the way down at the case mouth and there way the hell up there just a massive difference in bullet shape in seating depth and in uh, yeah the amount of jump these guys would have before it contacts the rifling so very very interested to see how these are going to shoot so let's do it let's get to the range okay home on the range we've got our five different loads where we 40.5 up to 42.5 grains of IMR 4895 and we've also got our PPU ammo that we're going to try out so yeah let's get set up and let's get started okay so our targets a little weird of course <clears throat> because our shots are going to hit way high so start out 40.5 grains. I'm going to be shooting at the top left dot, but it'll probably hit, uh, hopefully, toward the very top of the paper on the left. We shall see. Brass looks fine. Are we on the paper? Ah, yes, that will do nicely. So I think a commenter had mentioned that they were getting dings in the mouth of their brass on their K31 and when you really run these things things hard the brass kind of slings like crazy I'll tell you what I'm gonna eject this thing full that like that let's see what that brass looks like
yeah here we go so you can see got a nice dent in the mouth of the case and then some other love marks from uh, from hitting the concrete so I think that's just normal with these and that's mainly the reason why you see me working the bolt pretty slow and uh, trying to keep it keep that from happening All right, so we got that one little guy up high. That's okay. The more time I spend with these slides, I think the better I'm getting at uh, at aiming. That one up high certainly could have been me, no doubt about it. All right, let's move on. What's next? Forty-one grains. Yeah, and this will be the top right dot. So group should be just to the right of the last one. Okay, 41.5. Man, what is the deal with that one shot per charge going high? We are shooting at 50 yards. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Considered going over the 100 yard range, but I wanted to keep it all, keep all the groups on one piece of paper and it makes filming a little bit easier. So <clears throat> here we are. I think it, uh, Does fine, you know, 50 yards is fine for stuff like this. 
All right. What are we up to? 42? Is that 42 grains? Yep, it sure is. All right, 42 grains. Brass still looks good. This is very, still very light. Recoil is not bad. The brass looks fine. Primers are nice and round. And we're actually getting some smoke marks. I don't know if you'll be able to tell this or not. But down the neck, the neck's a little smoky. And even a little bit on the body of the case. I think that just comes from, you know, the brass not sealing the chamber all that well and it seems to show up a lot on light loads it's not something I freak out about was that a bad shot Eh, it didn't feel very good. Eh, hey, group still looks okay. That group really opened up a lot. I have to pay attention, make sure I'm bearing down and it's not me, but I feel like I'm getting a reasonably consistent aim, you know? Uh, that, that's a little bit weird. All right, last of our hand loads, 42.5 grains. Brass is still fine, no sign of pressure. All right, looks like that last one was probably our best group. But to be honest, I don't think any of these shot as well as uh, what was our 42 grain load that we shot in the last video. So let's go grab five rounds of the PPU and see what they do. Remember, these are significantly shorter, and I expect them to be significantly hotter. So hopefully uh, I don't get a bolt in my face. Yeah, it honestly didn't feel, didn't feel that much hotter at all. Are we on paper? Yeah, very similar point of impact. We'll see how they group.
Yeah, now that I'm a couple shots in, there's definitely more recoil. Filling it a little bit on the shoulder. But it's not bad. All right, how did those group? Hey, not too shabby. Same point of impact. Good looking group. PPU did all right for itself. All right, let's get back to the bench. Think about this. So I must confess myself unimpressed, right? None of this was really worth writing home about. Best group of the day was PPU at 1.1 inches. Most of these are our best. We had two groups that were 1.5 inches at 41 grains and 42.5 grains and then 2.4 inches, 1.8 inches, yeah. None of it was awful. Like, you know, none of it was just disgusting, but... Uh, no, none of it was terribly impressive either. Uh, I, I drew these horizontal lines exactly eight inches above where we were aiming just to get a feel for how much our point of impact was shifting. It's a decent little shift downward, right? Our, our lowest charge was, was definitely the highest and then it just kind of worked its way down. You know, there might be some potential on the high side here. If you remember our 40... Uh, where is that target? I've got that target here. Our 40 grain group was just over an inch, you know, on the last uh, trip to the range. But, you know, it just kind of is what it is. I think it's time to change something drastically. And the most likely culprit is bullet. I already mentioned earlier in the video about uh, possibly switching to this Sierra 175 grain Match King. I think that's what we're going to do in the next video. Run some tests with that bullet and see if we get uh, similar looking groups or whether you know they tighten up. I really thought for sure we'd we'd find some find some tighter shooting. Uh, loads in here but it just didn't happen so not too bad it was fun you know got to shoot the gun which is always good so uh yeah next video we'll go back to the drawing board and just start over so i'll see you guys then